Namaskar. Today we are really honored with the eminent presence of a creative genius of our country, the renowned filmmaker Sri Kumar Sani. He has been introducing a new idiom in his treatment of contemporary subjects as well as the great vistas of our great nation's artistic history. He has been defining cinema in entirely a, a new light. More than knowledge of cinema, it is Kumaji's wisdom of cinema which entertain and uh, decorate the landscape of our aesthetic cultural history. Thank you very much for, Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to have uh, this great opportunity Thank to you. have a chit chat with you. Yes, for, for me also it's a great opportunity Thank you to reach much. out to people especially in Kerala mm -hmm. and uh, the people that have uh, always been close to my heart uh, since I was seven or eight years old, you know, uh -huh. and um, since I, my family came from Pakistan, mm -hmm. from Sindh, India yes. at that time, and uh, came over to Bombay, and, you know, I've had umpteen number of contacts with uh, people from Kerala, mm. whether they are They've been my teachers or the coconut sellers <laughs> yes, and yes, yes. In, yeah. Bombay. in Bombay and um, then traveling by train very often. Mm -hmm. uh, you ca came across the, a different kind of um, speech, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. uh, which was so lovable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my colleague uh, Mira Nair, mm -hmm has captured it in some of her oh. work as well. Oh, very good, very nice. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. How was that uh, uh, affected, uh, that seven-year-old's mind? Mm. Do you have any uh, faded memory at least? Yes, I have mm. uh, some very intense Memor memories. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, memories have tricks mm -hmm. that they play on the mind, so I am not always sure mm -hmm. whether um, I'm exaggerating somewhat, or I'm, uh, yes. you know, um, talking more about the links that get formed, mm -hmm. actually. Now, the links that get formed in one's mind are, I think, uh, more um, substantial mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. the fact of the event, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what affects one's life and one's relationships with other people. And, um, you know, I'm so grateful to uh, different languages in this world and different modes of approaching uh, with love and affection uh, all over the world and uh, how I found it in Bombay, for instance. I mean, it, it's amazing that from Gujaratis and Maharashtrians and Hindi-speaking people mm. and uh, Malayalis, Mal uh, Malayalam-speaking people, one met every kind of mm. person. And um, most of the time, it was so just so wonderful mm. to be loved, whereas people start, you know, used to keep wondering mm -hmm. whether we will come together, Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, through their political voices, which we try to divide. Mm -hmm. Actually, I still remember, sir, uh, when I had an opportunity to interview Honorable uh, Sri L.K. Adwani Ji a yes. few years back. Yes. He was very, very descriptive about his memories about the partition. Because like you, 
whose uh, uh, place of birth is also within the Pakistan of today. Yes. So yes. that kind of a feeling is uh, inseparable, I think, as far as people who born there. You know, and uh, in your case, um, how far uh, it has enriched your experience to have an exposure to realities, harsher realities of life. Uh, you know, the, the great thing about this exposure is that you begin to return that love. Mm -hmm. and, and how you, it's up to you whether you want to actually look at only the harsh side of, harsh right. side of it. Because uh, especially now, since the 1980s and 90s, there have been really terrible riots, etc., in places where one had never expected, expected it. Right. You know, I mean, for instance, in Delhi, uh, uh, the riots were really condemnable. So were in Mumbai. the riots in Mumbai and uh, in Gujarat thereafter. And one had expected that we had left that behind, you know. Mm -hmm. the, the partition was long Yeah, it is over, a long, long back. And, and that we were uh, so proudly bring, building up mm -hmm. a totally new concept of a civilizational state, if you like, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which uh, Europe is only now struggling yes, to do. Yes. You know, India was possibly the very first... Actually, the cultural and artistic landscape of uh, Indian subcontinent was really not greatly affected by the partition itself, isn't mm -hmm. it, sir? Because all the basic inherent undercurrents are one and the same on both the sides for uh, whatever fine arts, yes. performing arts. It is really, for me, it is like that. And uh, it's only the opportunists who try to break up this mm -hmm. nation and uh, this idea of the nation and who tried to prevent people who came from the other side uh, mm -hmm. of the border, a geographical border. A geographical border is not a cultural border, yes. you know. So uh, I know that my, uh, my teacher, for example, Riti Ghatak, mm -hmm. he was a victim of the partition. Oh. He, all his films have actually spoken about, about the partition. Yes. And he was, of course, much older. Mm -hmm. So he was my teacher, yes. you know. And he, and he was from that side of Bengal. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt about it that people from uh, the other side of Bengal have suffered tremendously after coming. Mm -hmm. So have Sindhis, uh, yes. uh, a certain, the artists have. Yes. Definitely suffered, but um, well, let's say both of us, in each in his own way, Ritikda yes. and me, have also received tremendous affection and love from all of India. <laughs> Sir, before going uh, uh, into this spectrum of uh, uh, cinematic matters, uh, may I politely ask how uh, your uh, uh, affinity with Kerala uh, really concretized? Yes. Uh, yes. What were the inspirations? Uh, yes. You know, uh, I received the Homi Bhaba uh -huh. Fellowship. Uh, at that time, it was considered the most prestigious. Yes. yes. Private fellowship. Private fellowship. The most prestigious, uh, uh, you know, fellowship from the government was the Jawaharlal Nehru <laughs> Fellowship, which I received a little later. Yes. But uh, the Homi Bhaba Fellowship brought me very close to Narayana Menon, uh -huh. the musicologist mm -hmm. and the head of the National Center for the Performing Arts. Arts. 
And uh, so I used to meet him very often when I held that fellowship. And a little before, because uh, I was offered that fellowship on the basis of my first film, mm -hmm. uh, Maya Darpan. Yes. And um, so we often used to discuss many things, basically related to the performing arts. Mm -hmm. And he saw the kind of interest that I had in the epic form. Mm -hmm. So he always used to speak to me about the fantastic traditions that you have mm -hmm. here. Kathakali, everything. Kathakali, Hudiyattam. Mm. And in uh, practice, in fact, all the communities here mm -hmm. who otherwise uh, hesitate because of religious considerations mm -hmm. uh, to perform in other areas of the subcontinent mm -hmm. and elsewhere. Even they have performing traditions here, performance yes. traditions. And the involvement of all the communities is tremendous. And uh, so I came here and I interacted with all the communities, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, the person who used to make food for me uh -huh. every day at that time, when I came here to look at the performance. And you have a very, very special characteristics within the total framework of your individuality. You may relate with such people so easily, so lovingly, all the attendants around or cooks, I mean, uh, uh, chefs and um, uh, yes. caretakers of any house. Uh, we have been reading some of the articles about you and you are very good at building, nourishing, uh, cherishing human relationships. I so, so, how far it has uh, helped you uh, in getting more and more uh, uh, nearer uh, to the uh, Kerala's throbbing heart for arts and especially the traditional arts? Yes, um, it has helped me greatly mm -hmm. because uh, you know I have my teachers were such that they made me look at everyday life. Uh, and uh, in that everyday life to see the traces of all our history and now added to that because I have a lot of biologist friends mm -hmm. as well my own, in my own family and outside of it for six months I was at the National Center for Biological Sciences uh -huh. as an artist in residence mm -hmm. and you know it's been a very rich life uh, so, um, even in evolution, so you see every day signs of the history of life itself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. For instance, um, recently I came across um, a book in which it was, it's called The Inner Fish. You know, mm -hmm. I picked it up in a bookshop in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And then I read in it that your color cells for mm -hmm. perception of color and the cells for um, smell mm -hmm. can repurpose themselves into one another, uh -huh. you know, at any moment. You see music in colors That's or true. colors in music in That's whichever true. way. Yeah. And that is one of the very rare attributes of your films also. Yes, I, d I do constantly work with synesthesia mm -hmm. from between the, uh, the act of hearing and yes. the act of visuality mm -hmm. of looking at things and the sense of smell, um, touch, etc. It's constantly the, the, that play is what my cinema works from, absolutely. And my life works from it. You are a great preserver of uh, our beauty, the Indian beauty or the beauty of humanity yes. as a whole. Why uh, we restrict, uh, yes. uh, you know, you are that uh, great vista to Indian yeah. scenario only. Because whenever you are making a documentary or a short film about great forms of arts and uh, great artists, yes. then you are really preserving uh, that value, beauty of that. Yes. And you are also a creator of beauty. 
and how you correlate your role as a preserver of the beauty in short films and documentaries and the creator of a new sense of beauty in your feature films. Yes. Would you please just brief us on that? Yes, it's, a, it's again a complex question and uh, I expect you naturally to ask those questions and thank you very much for that. Uh, but while I'm working on a documentary, obviously uh, I, what I try to do is to bring back into it all the history of nature itself. You know, uh, when I've made a documentary for Guru Keluchan Mahapatra, yes. for example, we were sitting on the sands under the moonlight and discussing what he should do specially for me. So I said, first of all, uh, we will bring Prakriti into it. You know, nature. Yeah, nature. Yeah. That's it, and. Um, so he heard me very, very, in a very concentrated way. He says, you think cinema is like that? I said, well, uh, but uh, I cannot be too sure whether this, all of cinema is like that. Mm -hmm. But I know that in coming into contact with that tradition, mm -hmm. I have to stress it and that you in your dance would provide a kind of continuum yes. into nature. Nature would be coming back to you and uh, not only in that film but uh, the next uh, film that I made with the Ministry of External Affairs uh, which was on the flute mm -hmm. he came back for concluding that film mm -hmm. which was based on the music of Hari Prasad Chaurasia yes. mm -hmm. and he did the same thing so when he would make a gesture like this, there would be a response mm -hmm. from a tree to that gesture, you know, yes. or from a cloud. And indeed that uh, film ends on that. <laughs> Film directors, filmmakers like Kumaji. You yourself is the real hero of any film which you are depicting. Actually, we say that uh, a superhero, you know, Amida Bachchan, Mohanlal, Mammuti, or whoever it is, is the hero. But I really feel, sir, the hero of any film is the filmmaker himself or herself, because you are really acting the whole theme into a realistic piece of visual treat. You are the hero. Well, in a sense, I would like to say it's the viewer who is the hero. Oh, great. Yes. You know? <laughs> the, the, or, uh, yes, that's you know, great. Or the heroine. Yes, sir. And uh, because I think I don't target the viewer. Mm -hmm. I make the viewer sit in my position. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. That is, I'm looking at the world, observing it, and sometimes just intervening Mm -hmm. ever so slightly so that that my observation becomes a creation of beauty yes and itself you know how when one is in love uh, with with somebody or yes. something all the time your observation itself gets intensified mm -hmm. and creates delight in the beauty of the other i think that is what so you have dealt with the concepts of austerity and ornamentation in uh, many of your uh, cinematic analysis yes. and intercourses. And uh, maybe here the observation leads to ornamentation yes. as a way of appreciation. Am Abs I right? Absolutely. So absolutely. how these two concepts correlate in your films? Well, uh, you know, in the uh, Alankara Shastras, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, ornamentation, shastras of ornamentation, vis-a-vis mm -hmm. uh, -vis language, for example, figures of speech, the rupakas, the yes. metaphor, the metonymy, uh, you know, different type of things, all this is there. Uh, we can draw upon it from our traditions in the, um, the angas of music as well, mm -hmm. you know, like murki or mind or khatka. You know, we have many different modes of ornamentation. Yes. And that is what creates beauty and insight and uh, into all the rasas, no? Mm -hmm. Like um, Shringar and Karuna and uh, Bhibhatsa mm -hmm. everything. All the Nava rasas. Yes, so all the rasas. So, ornamentation mm -hmm. plays that part. I think ornamentation um, uh, is, should not be for itself, but it, it creates the rasa, mm -hmm. you know. Kumaji, you, uh, you had uh, gone on records that uh, when you were making uh, the bamboo flute, uh, you felt that uh, uh, you had a dream of uh, just living under the sea. Yes. And uh, you were vociferous about uh, uh, the, the, the aesthetic property of the water body, its musical combinations, whatever it is. Yes. And uh, just now you have used uh, the word metaphor and uh, many uh, critics observed that water itself is, is a solid and beautiful metaphor in many of uh, Kumar Saab's movies. Any mm. comments, sir? Yes, it is indeed so. Uh, but it has come from the unconscious, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, even the great uh, psychoanalysts I have read um, used to get so much from water, you know. Then recently somebody read something, maybe it is connected with the womb. Yes, yeah? yes. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the origin of life mm -hmm. and so is the sea, mm -hmm. origin of life. Um, and recently, somebody read out a line in Persian to me from the Quran mm -hmm. saying that I have created all life from water. Mm -hmm. This is Allah Himself saying that. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? This is a very wonderful uh, aspect of your great story, sir, that uh, in 1972, it was the first time you made the full feature film. Maya Darpan yes, with uh, yes. NTFC's help. Or, yes, yes. And then you had to wait for 12 long years for Tarang That's right. to be realized. Yeah. So uh, it's not, uh, in your case, uh, I mean, uh, storing the money and getting a financial from the cinema industry sort of world mm -hmm. and making films after films after films. Yeah. But even money is a beautiful coincidence in your eternal wait for a good movie. <laughs> How would you feel about that, sir? Well, it's been quite difficult um, and I'm truly grateful f to, you know, people around me, my family first, just my wife and children and my brothers and uh, then my friends, you know, uh, across the globe. I lost one of them very recently, uh, Paul Willeman, mm -hmm. you know, who has written, along with Ashish Raja mm -hmm. he has written the Encyclopedia of Indian Cinema. Mm -hmm. So, you won't believe it, but whenever he heard that I was in trouble, he would do something, you know, from so far away, and he would hear it from other sources than mine. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's uh, been a very difficult time and um, it's, I suppose, it's because of the tremendous support of the people of India, you know, similarly, uh, all parts of India, virtually, you know, not only Bombay where I was staying or Delhi, which has uh, kept me afloat. Mm -hmm. so I owe it to 